I tell you, we cover everything on this program. There's nothing we don't get into. This next bloke's uh, an Aussie battler who's not afraid to start <clears throat> at the bottom. Enterprising entrepreneur Richard Fryer calls himself the crowned king of poo. <laughs> Flushed with success, he's on, I know, they keep coming. He's on a one-man business mission to clean up in more ways than one. Would you please welcome Richard Fryer? Welcome, Richard. Nice to meet you here on Monday. Now, was, Matt, if I just may say, that wasn't the best start for the, uh, the poo industry, but uh, <laughs> the, it, it is, the whole essence of this is making poo clean. I'd like to make that point because really, what we're doing with our human excrement is quite something, uh, when you talk about fertilisers, there is no better fertiliser than human poo. It is second to none. You may laugh, but it's a reality. So, and as we know, I mean, there are many parts of the world that use it uh, in, in agriculture, that use it in nurseries, that use it, etc. What we do is dump it out at the sea. <laughs> well, isn't that questionable? But, 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 but again, I mean, obviously people are having lunch, so we've got to be fairly, <laughs> fairly discreet in the way we discuss these sorts of things. But I mean, it, it is, you, you see it as, an, as a business. I mean, it is your business. So yes. I mean, money make... <laughs> it's everybody's business. <laughs> It's a money-making operation. Think way. of it. Everyone can make a buck. <laughs> do, you, do you actually put on your business card when you are magnet? No, 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 I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I think you've got to sort of slowly ease into it. I've actually... Like you've, got, you've got to watch everything you say on this side, don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, just, let's say, poo. Teachers used to say I talk more poo than anyone in the whole school. You. Now, I've actually think, this is life. Is there reality in what they're saying? I'm 47 now, and I still, I believe they were right. I do talk more poo. And now I really feel I've, I am the crown king of poo. All right, well, but tell us what you, what's involved. I mean, there are nurseries in Australia that, that are actually uh, processing the human waste and using it sensibly. In fact, Australia is leading the world in human excrement. In, its, in, its, in, in turning it into an organic matter, in as much as uh, they have a microwave system which takes out all the, uh, all the nasties out of the, uh, out of the poo. There's no hepatitis, no AIDS, no anything. I mean, would you eat carrots uh, grown out of my poo? I'm asking you. <laughs> Come on. You start with the toughies, don't you? Yeah, why well, not? This is the question everybody's got to ask, and this is what everybody is asking themselves. Would they do it? You know what I mean? And basically, I think the answer, without you answering, if I may answer for you, is I think, no. I think you're probably, yeah, no, I would, of course, um, because I know Asian countries do it, I know well, people around the world do it. For centuries. We've eaten it. I mean, the Chinese were here, and well, they used to be pride of the Italians being here, growing all our vegetables, or a lot of our vegetables, and certainly the Chinese shops. That was all grown out of human excrement, so we've all eaten it without even knowing it. It's, it's, it is a stupid waste. I guess it's a matter of what's the health department say? Is there is a well, problem there? Yes, there's, there's, there's lots of, they're doing the best they can, and they're doing a wonderful Wonderful job, and they really are in every aspect. It's just in many circumstances their hands are tied. But it's by uh, in using poo as excrement, excrement is as the main issue. But really, it, it it evolves to what 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 goes down the sink. Like that's really what we've all got to look at. Look at everything. I mean, women specifically are quids in front. I was thinking about it while I was waiting out in the room there to come on the show. Do you ever think about anything else? Well, no, I don't. As a matter of fact, I am becoming a bit of a pain. So far, but, you, but women are dead set got to be quids in front because basically they've had children. Now, let's say, like, how many women, every nappy that goes out, they check the poo, like, to see what sort of, what, how the baby's doing. So they're quids in front. Now, ironically enough, I've spoken to the nursery, and I say ironically enough, <laughs> I've spoken to the nurseries, the nurseries are gearing up, and I just, this all sort of ties in in a bizarre way. The nurseries are setting up, women are going to be the 90% buyer at nurseries. Right. And are they specifically going to buy organic matter? They are making lounge rooms for blokes, so they can sit in the lounge room and read papers while the, ba the, the ladies go and spend frivolously. Whatever way, without right. at nurseries. At nurseries. Now so they're doing that at various nurseries. So the sorry, nurseries. They're, they're they're bringing home instead of getting uh, chook droppings or cow manure, they're bringing home human stuff. No, they can bring home human stuff now. Oh, okay. most most certainly. Okay. There's a New Zealand company that sells kiwi pea. <laughs> well, why would we want to buy kiwi pea? 
<laughs> How much money is involved in this? How much do you can, well, can you become a millionaire? <laughs> You've certainly got Jeff Harvey's attention, I'll tell you that. <laughs> We're all onto it, believe me. Well, how did you yeah. get onto it? How did you get into it? Mate, uh, I, I was into... Ra the truth of it, I used to train racehorses. I had, uh, I, had a, I had a farm in Walker and I sold the farm and I had animals there. I thought, I'm never going to never gonna pay another Zach for racehorses. I said to the people when I sold the farm, send me the horse down, break it in, and when it's, when it's, when it's broken in, which would have been a year later down the track, ring me, which I'd since moved into Paddington. Uh, Brisbane Transport rang me at 12.30 and said, look, your horse is arriving at 4 o'clock, where do you want it? And I thought, God, my yard's about 10 foot big, I don't need a horse, like, I need a horse like a hole in the head. So I thought, I was playing cricket at the showground, I said, drop it at the showground. In between batting and bowling, I raced across to the showground, met Brisbane Transport, mucked out a stable, thought, another horse, how much is it going to cost me a week to have this thing here? And they said, 120 a week. I spotted a pile of manure and I said, can I have that manure? And they said, yeah, there was about 140 tonnes there. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I rang up column eight and I said, could you put a, put, a, put, put a story in about poo? So they made a beautiful story about royal poo at only 12 bucks a bag. I had 3,000 phone calls. My life changed. Over a pile of you know what? Oh, right, and it's gone. Let me say, I've just brought in a couple of the finest samples too. <laughs> now, mate, you might laugh, but this is... If, apologies if you... Well... If you're having sandwich at home, a little bit of seriousness. A little bit of seriousness here. Serious like, mate, 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 exactly. Like, I want you to have a look at this. Oh, no, I, I take your word for it. Well, you can actually slow it down and keep it for a distance. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad quality poo. That's dropped about two days ago. It's got a little too much green in it. But now have a look at this. This is the real McCoy. This is sheep poo. Odorless. I'll show you this. No, odorless, mate. I want you to take your word for it. I'm take your Can word somebody for it. smell it? I need. Mate, it is odor. He'll smell anything. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this, this. Have a look at the nitrogen. You see that white on that? That's nitrogen. And then you break that open, right? That is the absolutely piesta of resistance so far as poo. All right. Yeah. I go, no, no, but hang on, hang on, I just want to say this, that overnight, we were, we were actually shoveling this stuff, and I left this in the, uh, in the pool, and look what's grown on the end of it. <laughs> that was in one night. That's amazing what it does. Amazing now, now, assuming I'm talking the truth, and I'm saying human poo is, this is half grade to it. The beauty in this has got beauties in it, the beauty in every form of poo has got a beauty in it, but sheep poo is absolutely perfect in, in as much as it's odourless, and its <laughs> nutrient value is fantastic. Alright Richard, you, everything you wanted to know about... <laughs> now listen, just quickly, there's a phone number there, what do you want people to call because you're doing a film, a, a, a documentary? A, a, a documentary on poo, and I'd love anybody with any anecdotes about poo, humour, <laughs> poo humour, <laughs> to be... Line. Or anybody that wants any sheep manure or horse manure, I have got the exclusive on sheep manure. Call 328 I told you, we do everything in this program. Would you please thank Richard Fry?